Black Jews. Soon after, Wentworth author Matthew arrived in the United States in 1919. He joined the UNIA. This exposed him to Black theology and the UNIA's insistence that formal religious creeds and symbols should generate Black pride and reflect the imperatives of race uplift as a divine concern. Matthew, who had began his career in religious leadership as a Christian Pentecostal minister, gradually began to develop a vision for reclaiming an ancient Jewish heritage of Blacks. Matthew perceived a history and genealogy of ancient Africans in the narrative traditions about ancient Israel. He rejected the conventional interpretations of Noah's legend, which identified Noah's son Ham exclusively as an ancestor of Africans. This hermetic myth of African ancestry had for centuries been used to represent Africans as ethnic heathens, idolatrous by heritage. Matthew conceded that the ancient Africans were initially the exclusive offspring of, of Ham. But he then went on to assert a boldly different version of this biblical genealogy. When Abraham's descendants, Shem's progeny, went into Egypt, they intermingled with Ham's Egyptian descendants. This population of people claimed Matthew, the seed of both Ham and Shem, made the exodus out of Egypt into Canaan and began the nation of ancient Israel. Matthew would impress on his followers that Moses himself had married the Ethiopian daughter of a black Mennonite, Midianite, excuse me, priest. For this reason, Matthew identified Moses' two sons as the first Ethiopian Hebrews, a term he used to identify both the biblical ancestors of blacks and contemporary black Jews. Of even more greater significance, in establishing the lineage of these Ethiopian Hebrews, however, was Matthew's explanation of their relationship with ancient Israel's celebrated sage ruler, Solomon. Candace, the Queen of Sheba, cultivated diplomatic relations with Solomon, and according to the Kibra Nagast, eventually produced a son with Solomon, Menelik. This Menelik, Matthew advanced, was the founder of a lineage that stretched all the way down to Haile Selassie I, whose uncle was Menelik the Great. Most important for Matthew was the fact that the Falasha Jews of Ethiopia had attracted international attention in the early 20th century. Matthew's critics might easily ridicule his genealogical narrative but it was far more difficult to deny the presence of Ethiopia's black Jews. They practiced a form of Judaism whose lineage was independent of European Judaism. The latter was derived from Rebionic Judaism. The Falasha Jews, in other words, practiced a religion that more closely resembled the temple-based Israelite religion that existed before the emergence of synagogue-based Judaism. It was left to Matthew to show that these Ethiopian Jews were practicing the original religion of Blacks and that this Hebrew legacy belonged to all of the African diaspora. Matthew's decision to foreground slavery in the Americas as a history of heritage, destruction played an essential role in his religious narrative. That Judaism was the original religion of African peoples was certainly news to his prospective converts. Matthew subverted the supposed eccentricity of this, his the theological claims by explaining why most Blacks had never heard of this history. He interpreted the Atlantic slavery as an experience of ethnic destruction. This, he explained, was why Africans throughout the diaspora and even throughout Africa were separated from knowledge about their historical Hebrew religion. The work of Black Judaism, as he understood it, lay preeminently in reclaiming the Ethiopian Hebrew legacy and restoring the Africans to the ethnic heritage that slavery and colonialism had elided. 
Once Matthew became persuaded of a black Jewish heritage, he gradually established the theology and institutional plans that led to the Congregation of Commandment Keepers, one of several sects of black Judaism. Reading scriptures in Hebrew, following a kosher diet, wearing distinctive clothing, these signifying practices were a vital means of representing racial blackness as distinctive, pre-American, religious, and honorable. By the time of his death in 1973, Matthew's Bath Ha Tafila Ethiopian Congregation, as the Congregation of Commandment Keepers was renamed, of one of West 123rd Street in Harlem comprised more than 250 members. He had also established the Ethiopian Hebrew Rabbinical College and the Royal Order of Ethiopian Hebrews, a fraternal society instituted to supplement the work of the synagogue.